Hello guys! In today's video, as you asked me, I'm going to tell you about the, the part that somehow everyone finds the most difficult, the most unclear. It is the math part uh, of the exam, uh, to, of the entrance exam to the Finnish universities. Uh, and I'm going to tell you briefly about the main concepts of these tasks. And also, I'm going to give you some examples and I will go through them with you. So let's start. The first thing that you should keep in mind is that uh, almost all the tasks are practice or life-based tasks. So uh, it will be something about maybe purchases, everyday purchases. It will be something about banks, borrowings, loans. It will be maybe something about the age of people, like count this or count that, if someone is older or, um, I don't know, is older than someone else. So all these tasks won't be something, I don't know, imaginative, uh, very imaginative. It will be all life-based, it will be all based, uh, the, all the tasks will be based on the everyday experience of people. The second thing is actually what the exam includes, like what parts of uh, all this science uh, it includes. Uh, mostly it includes math and logic, uh, so uh, sometimes, I would say that most of the times, uh, um, sums or problems will uh, require both to use your math skills and to use your logical skills. Uh, so it's something more combined as for me it was not something that I was used to but anyway it is not so hard to get used to it it's not so hard to understand the tasks and uh, also there will be geometry but there there can be there will be uh, it will be only some basic uh, basics of geometry, so there won't be something that like you will see the first time, only the basics of it, so don't be nervous. The first thing that I would like to mention is that calculators are not allowed during the exams, and uh, I don't want you to be to panic or to be nervous because of it, because actually you do not need calculators at the exams, Mm, all the numbers, everything that you count is countable. Uh, and uh, there was not such a moment during my exam that I thought, oh my god, I need a calculator, I cannot count it on paper. So don't be nervous about this fact. Everything is, I think, easier than you think. And now I would like to show you some examples sh so that uh, you can understand what types of sums, what types of problems you can see during the exam. So the first task that I prepared for you, I think it's quite typical for this exam, um, and it is not so hard to solve, but anyway, uh, try to, after watching this video, after watching what examples I had here, try to find something similar uh, or try to get this point how to solve this problem because if you can do it i think that it's highly likely that you will have the same uh, problems during the exam and uh, it can be described differently it can be hidden somehow in this problem that oh that's something that i've already solved that i already know how to do uh so it's very important to re to um, not only to be able to solve these problems, but also to be able to recognize them in uh, the text of the problem or uh, in the text of the uh, of the task that you are given. So the first one, uh, A, B, and C share a fee that they have received. A gets one fifth, uh, B gets uh, two fourths, uh, while C's share is three thousand euros calculate the share of A. I can say that it's quite a standard uh, problem and I can say also that there is nothing difficult about this problem so everyone can solve it. Uh, but anyway, let's look here. So what do we have here are probably, let's take it's like three people, A, B and C and everyone has 
mm, uh, its uh, share of free. So everyone has one part, a certain part of um, the total sum. So they divided something between three people. And in such uh, sums, in such problems, it's very uh, comfortable to take, uh, to use unknown variables. And uh, let's uh, take, for example, x, and it will be total sum uh, that was divided between three people. Uh, then what we have? A gets one fifth multiplied x because he gets the fifth part of this total sum. Uh, what B gets? Uh, we have two fourths, so actually it's one, it, it's half, a half of all this sum. Uh, so it means we should multiply uh, it, uh, this half, by x. Um, and uh, the last one, see, we actually have the sum uh, already uh, we know how much money this person has is 3000 euros and now what we should do is we should uh, prepare an equation uh, and how do we do it like we already uh, decided what each person has what part we've written it down and now we should add all this uh, parts uh, put them together and it will be equal to the total sum so like you see on the screen and then we just solve this equation I think there is nothing special about it and we get that x is total and be very careful uh, re always read what is needed what is required from um, to do in the task because x equals 10,000 10, is not your final uh, answer. It is a total sum that these people have. Uh, but what is required from you at the task is to calculate the share of A. So it means we should multiply uh, or just divide this number by 5 and we get 2,000. Uh, so it is a very important thing that is always checked in all the tasks and actually in all math task, tasks, I think, that you read the task carefully and you understand what is required from you because uh, you could just like, you know, oh, X, I found X and here is 10,000, so the answer is 10,000, but actually it is not because it is not what was required. Okay, the next uh, problem is very, very important, so listen carefully, look at the screen carefully, uh, because I'm sure 100% that you will see it during your exam, and you will remember me when you see it. Um, and actually, I think you can See it more than once during the exam, maybe something similar. But okay, let's go. Find the single percentage increase or decrease equivalent to 50% increase followed by 25% decrease. So first of all, you should understand what is needed here. So something, uh, the price of some good was uh, increased by 50% at first and that it was decreased by 25%. And you should find that this difference in percentage between the uh, initial price and the final price of this good. What you should never do here, that is the biggest fault, the biggest, mis uh, the biggest mistake you could ever do, is just to think, oh, what we can do here? It was increased by 50% and decreased by 25%, so... What is the purpose of this ha of uh, this problem? We just subtract the, the 25 from 50 and here we are, 25% decrease. No, it doesn't work like this. It's the biggest mistake you could ever do. This problem is not hard to solve, but you should always remember what you should take here into account. So how do we solve a problem like this? First of all, write to yourself what is actually given in the task. Always do it with every task you have because it will help you to 
visualize to understand the problem better and to solve it correctly so we have product a uh, then the price of this product was uh increased by 50 percent and now uh it is the price of it is a1 and uh, then the price of a1 was decreased by 25 percent and we get a2 so it's the final price as we know, numbers and percentages cannot be counted together because these measures are different. We cannot just uh, write like A plus 50 minus 25, it's what I was talking about. So we should uh, put number percentages into numbers. How do we do it? We just divide percentages by 100. And we get that 50 percentages is one is uh, 0 0.5 and 25 percentages is 0 0.25. What we do, how do we find this percentage? Just imagine that the initial price of the product was 10. And uh, you know that 50% of 10 is 5. Then you just uh, uh, add 10 to 5 and it's 15, the second price. So how do we actually find this 50% from the number? We just multiply this number by percentage, but in its form of a number. So like here, 10 plus 10 multiply 0.5 and we count and we get 15. If it's hard for you to imagine with uh, the uh, everything with the unknown variables, just try to imagine it with numbers uh, when you can really count and understand whether you write something correctly or not. So here we have uh, a plus a multiply uh, 0.5 and it's equal 1.5 uh, a. Uh, so this is the new price, the second price that we get. Uh, it is a1. Uh, now the price of the product is a multiply 1.5. What we do next, we count the decrease in 25%, but be very, very careful here. We do not take the initial price. We do not take a. We take a1 because the basement is different here. The price that uh, the... Mm, decree that was decreased is not the initial price is not a it's already the price with this 50 percent plus 50 percent and it's very important because you will get another number you will take percentage from another number and the answer will be different uh, so what we take here is 1.5 a so it's really the second price minus because we the uh, price was decreased uh minus uh, 0.25 because we had 25 percent multiply this number the second price because we take 25 percent from the second price and you should always remember it not from the first one not from the initial one from the second one uh, and then we just count and it turns out that the answer is 1.125 uh, A. So it's actually the final price. So what we have here at the end, we have that we had uh, like A, 1 A, and now the price is 1.125 A. Uh, and in percentages, so we put back these numbers in percentages by multiplying it by 100, and we can see that we had 100%, and now it is 112.5%. So it, we can see that the price now is up by 12.5, 12 and a half percent. It will be the actual answer, plus 12.5. So be very careful, be very careful with these tasks. Uh, they are tricky because you should always remember from which number you take the percentage. So now what I'd like to tell you is like my final words here. What other possible problems or sums you can meet during the exam? 
uh, it can be uh, like the continue you should uh, continue the sequence of numbers and they are not really hard like I don't know two four six eight then continue like ten twelve uh, of course not so that easy but something like this there can also be just simple equations um there can be the task to find a number or salary or price or age when something is more or less uh, than, than something or something comprises a certain part of something so when you have this many variables uh, many conditions and uh, you should find something um you also can have uh, uh problems where you should use direct or inverse proportions and i would highly recommend you to learn the theme and to understand how to count simple and compound interest rates because uh it's highly likely you will meet such you will face such tasks during the exam um and i think that's it for now uh if you have any questions about the problems that we solved today ask them if you have any questions regarding any facts that i told you today ask them and of course if you want me for example to explain you the theme i don't know of direct and uh inverse proportions and to show me the tasks that can be during the exam uh and uh, we can solve them together or if you want me to explain you the theme of the simple or compound interest rate which is not too hard but it's good when you, you have someone to explain it uh, and to solve maybe some problems with you concerning this problem uh, this uh, concept uh, so just write down in comments and i will make this videos for you because i'm really willing to help you with the exam and if you want to study here in finland so that you will pass your exam successfully and i'm happy to do everything so that you will achieve this goal so that's all for today and i'm happy i'm very happy to share this knowledge with you uh i feel really pleased after it uh have a nice day evening or whatever you have now thank you for watching this video write down in comments any questions any uh i don't know uh offers uh put your thumbs up and bye